Now, I would like to point out that in recent years, the resolution of these 3D meshes have gone from tens of thousands of vertices to hundreds of thousands of vertices, and even recently, millions of vertices. And in their raw state, it is very difficult to handle these meshes. It is very difficult to store and transmit these 3D meshes. So compression and more importantly, scalable compression is very, very important to enable a very easy handling and storing and transmission of these uh, highly detailed multimedia structures. Now, in 3D meshes, subdivision is a process to go from a coarse mesh to a fine, smooth mesh, mesh which has high number of uh, vertices. And I have shown here, it is uh, acquired by a repetitive application of this subdivision uh, process. And how this subdivision works is that we take our original mesh and then we introduce new vertices at the midpoint of each of its uh, edges. And then we uh, introduce new edges to connect these newly introduced vertices. And then at the end, we do some kind of averaging to adjust the position of these white vertices based on the position of these old uh, coarse uh, vertices. And if we do this process again and again, we see we can go till we achieve a smooth high resolution mesh. Now, subsampling is the inverse process of uh, subdivision and which works aside that we go from a fine mesh to a coarse mesh. And how it is done is that we first identify the vertices that we want to throw away. You see that in each main triangle, we have identified three vertices that we want to throw away. And then we physically uh, remove these vertices and their associated edges to go from a fine mesh to a coarse mesh. And the same I have done here uh, on this uh, bunny mesh. And you see that uh, we can throw away a lot, of, lot more information. We can still keep the geometry. And of course, if we throw a lot more information, uh, uh, we introduce a lot of distortion and uh, geometry is distorted, let's say. So I would like to point out one main aspect is that the subsampling, the way I have explained uh, here, it is only possible if your fine mesh have a certain kind of a uh, connectivity. And this connectivity, in theory, is known as subdivision connectivity. That means that the uh, connectivity of this fine mesh can be exactly predicted by using the connectivity of this coarse mesh and some kind of a subdivision scheme. And if the mesh stick to this uh, definition, it is called semi-regular mesh. And in uh, practice, uh, semi-regular meshes uh, are actually um, not acquired directly. Original meshes are irregular. However, you can convert an irregular mesh to a semi-regular mesh, making use of some kind of a remeshing technique. So we'll be discussing about semi-regular meshes, highly detailed semi-regular meshes. So uh, in practice, uh, for scalable compression of these highly detailed semi-regular meshes, we use a wavelet transform or multi-resolution analysis. How it works, we take the original semi-regular mesh and we go uh, to a coarse mesh using subsampling, as I just explained. And then for vertices that are present in this mesh, but they are not present in this mesh, we create prediction using some kind of a subdivision. So subdivision can be different kinds. I'm not going to uh, the details of subdivision itself. So, But for these vertices for which we have created the prediction, we can record the prediction error in the form of a vector, and we call it the subband, yeah, or high-frequency subband. And we can do the same process again on this uh, high, uh, on, on this low resolution mesh, and we can create another resolution subband. Yeah? And we can re keep repeating this process till we end up with a number of subbands and a coarse mesh geometry known as the base mesh. Now, of course, these two components can be put together in the inverse transform to reconstruct our original semi regular mesh because the wavelet transform is lossless. Now, how we are going to do the scalable compression of these semi-regular meshes? We are going to do no quantization of this base mesh. We are going to save it losslessly. And we are going to do scalable quantization of uh, these uh, prediction errors, which are also called wavelet coefficients. Yeah? And scalable quantization, as the way I explained before, we code it in a bit plane by bit plane uh, fashion. Now, in lossy source compression, it is very important to know the statistics of your uh, signal. And moreover, it is also very important to know the rate distortion behavior of your signal uh, under embedded quantization or under any kind of quantization. And traditionally, the generalized Gaussian distributions are used to appro approximate the histograms of wavelet coefficients in the wavelet decomposed structure of a mesh. Now, they can approximate the histogram very accurately, but they have a slight problem that uh, uh, due to their complicated formulations, the rate distortion behavior under embedded quantization is not tractable. So this motivated us to propose a more simpler solution, but it was uh, novel, as uh, I'll explain later, its contribution, actually. 
And here we see that we have proposed a novel Laplacian mixture model, which as shown by this equation is just a linear combination of uh, two Laplacian PDFs. And due to its simplicity, now we can compute the rate distortion behavior uh, exactly, and that I did compute in my uh, thesis. I'll not go into the details of this because it involves a lot of uh, mathematics. But for illustrative purposes, I have shown here the two Laplacian PDFs. The blue one is the low variance Laplacian PDF, while the green one is the high variance Laplacian PDF. And this is the linear uh, summation or linear combination of uh, these two PDFs, this red curve. And you see that this red curve, which is the linear combination, it keeps its uh, sharp decay property of uh, this uh, blue PDF till these intersection points. And afterwards, it inherits uh, the more flat nature of this uh, green uh, PDF. So here I have shown uh, or compared the histogram approximation uh, performance of the proposed Laplacian mixture model against generalized Gaussian model and the single Laplacian model for this dyno uh, mesh. And the blue bars here are the experimentally observed histogram. And we see here that this red curve actually closely follows this experimentally observed uh, histogram. Actually, it follows it more closely than this black or this uh, green curve. And we have observed the same similar behavior uh, for other kind of uh, meshes also uh, when we compared our performance to generalized Gaussian or single Laplacian models. And here in this slide, I have shown the distortion rate modeling performance of uh, the Laplacian mixture model against the other two models for the same dyno mesh. I have plotted the distortion versus uh, the rate. And again, you see that this red curve, which is the Laplacian mixture model, it closely follows this blue experimentally observed uh, curve more closely than either black or this green curve. And again, we have observed similar behavior for other meshes also. And now we can safely conclude that uh, the proposed Laplacian mixture model has a better histogram fitting, and yet it also gives, uh, and of course, it also gives a better distortion rate uh, fitting than the commonly used generalized Gaussian schemes. Now we have uh, modeled our signal, our, we have modeled our uh, histograms, but still we need to find out what is the optimal embedded quantization strategy we should use our, for our signal. And we have performed a novel uh, model based analysis. Uh, here also, and the model was, of course, our Laplacian mixture model. Uh, and we concluded that what kind of strategy we should use for optimal uh, embedded quantization. I'll not go into the details again for this analysis that we performed, but I'll present the conclusions of my analysis. And we found out that the optimal embedded quantization strategy should be the one uh, that have equal size bins. Yeah, You see? Uh, bins are equal size. Yeah, on different levels, of course, they have uh, changed their size. But on one level, all the bins are of same size. The exception is this central bin, which is symmetrically distributed around the mean value, and it is called the dead zone bin. And this dead zone bin should be twice the size of the normal cells. You see here, it is eight delta, while the uh, other cell have uh, four delta size. And then this property should be kept constant throughout all the embedded. Uh, levels. In practice, such a quantization uh, uh, scheme, in theory, it is known as successive approximation quantization, and we'll be making use of this successive approximation quantization in our uh, design of uh, scalable uh, compression systems. Now, the original aim of the, the wavelet transform was to perform decorrelation of spatial domain data, but uh, we know that uh, transforms are not often uh, perfect, so there might still be statistical dependencies between the wavelet coefficients. Uh, of a de uh, in a decomposed structure of a mesh. And in meshes, there are three kinds of uh, statistical dependencies. The interband dependencies, the intraband dependencies, and the composite dependencies. The interband dependencies are the dependencies between the wavelet coefficients of different resolution subbands, while the intraband dependencies are the dependencies between the wavelet coefficient of the same resolution subband. And the composite dependencies are the hybrid of both interband and intraband dependencies. Now we have uh, we have computed uh, the mutual information uh, for all three kind of uh, dependencies through a novel uh, analysis uh, that we performed. And our analysis revealed that in the wavelet decomposed structure of a mesh, the interband dependencies are the weakest form of dependencies, while the interband dependencies are more stronger than interband dependencies, and the composite dependencies are much more stronger than both interband or interband dependencies. Now, this analysis reveals that uh, if we want to design an efficient compression system for meshes, we should probably go with intraband dependencies. And if our computational complexity allows us, we should go for the composite dependencies because they are the best. But I would like to point out that the state-of-the-art compression system uh, uh, employ these interband dependencies, which, as revealed by our analysis, are the weakest form of dependencies. 
So by now we know a lot about our uh, signal, which were these uh, subbands. We know uh, what are the histograms of uh, the subband, what are the statistical properties. We know what kind of embedded quantization scheme we should use. We know what kind of uh, statistical dependencies we should exploit. And we put together all this knowledge that we have acquired through different uh, analyses. And uh, we have designed two uh, scalable compression systems for semi-regular meshes. First one is the intra-band SIM compression system, or SIM codec. And the second one is the 3XC composite uh, codec. How we did it, uh, we simply took uh, our signal, the subband, and we do uh, the embedded quantization. And then using the quartry bit plane coding, we uh, coded this uh, subband in a bit plane by bit plane fashion, such that every subband is handled independently of all other subbands. And then the coded bit stream for each subband are further compressed using context adaptive arithmetic coding, and then bit stream formulation is uh, done. And the base mesh is actually losslessly coded and in, is embedded into the bit stream. So now I'm going to explain what are the scalability features of our proposed uh, coding architectures. Uh, we have two scalability modes. The first one is the quality scalability mode. And it works such that if you receive more and more data, and if you receive more and more bit planes, you refine the quality of your uh, compressed signal. And the red color here shows the error with respect to the original mesh. And we see that as we go further in the rate, or we decode more and more bit planes, we uh, receive higher quality, and the mesh becomes more and more green. Now, this quality scalability mode is the mode that is available in our coding system also and in the state-of-the-art compression system as well. Now, the second scalability mode is the resolution scalability mode, and which works such that if we see more and more uh, rate or more and more bit planes, we actually refine the resolution of our uh, compressed mesh. I would like to point out that, that this resolution scalability mode that we uh, have is it's not present in the state-of-the-art compression systems. And it was enabled by our coding architectures. And this is a very important uh, scalability feature because this allows the decoding of high resolution meshes on uh, uh, terminals that have limited resolution capabilities. So it is a very, very uh, important, uh, important uh, scalability feature that was enabled by our coding frameworks. Now, here I have integrated a demo for scalable decoding of uh, this uh, skull mesh. And you see again that uh, if we see more and more data, we can reconstruct uh, better, better quality. And due to its scalable nature, you can stop the decoding process at any point in time, and you can reconstruct an intermediate quality of the mesh. And here I have shown the reconstruction in the wireframe. You see, again, the vertices and the edges, they refine as you see more and more rate. And here I have shown it with the color. The red color shows the error with respect to the original uh, input mesh. And you see as we receive more and more, uh, decode more and more data or rate, uh, we reconstruct the green mesh. Huh? So here I have shown the 3D view. And of course, other things follow accordingly. So here I have compared the performance of our uh, proposed architecture 3XC against the progressive geometric compression system of uh, Caltech, which was the state-of-the-art compression system when we started implementing or designing our coding systems. And the results are shown here at a, a rate of 0 0.05 uh, bits per uh, vertex. And we see that at the same rate, we can do much better actually compared to this contemporary uh, scheme. We have much less uh, red color in our uh, decoded mesh. And the red color, as I said, is the error, shows the error with respect to the original mesh. Actually, visually, you can also see that, that this mouth area, for example, is represented in a much better way than uh, here when you compare it to the original uh, input mesh. Yeah? And here we have an uh, improvement of around 1.9 uh, dB. We have observed similar improvements, sometimes more, sometimes less, uh, in uh, all different uh, meshes, normal or non normal. Uh, and now we can conclude that since our coding architectures enable two things, first is that they have a new scalability mode. They have enhanced the scalability of the bitstream, the resolution scalability mode. And since they can uh, perform better uh, compression than the existing state-of-the-art design, we can claim that now we have a state-of-the-art, new state-of-the-art in scalable uh, mesh compression of semi-regular meshes.